Imagine yourself in your home city or hometown, wherever, and you constructed this place and you made it into something beautiful. It has golden buildings and diamond encrusted street signs. It smells like cookies and cakes all the time. And you walk down it every morning seeing the people who appreciate you, the people you love, the people you've worked hard to build relationships with. And it's just a sunny day out. Everything's great. And you do this every single day, feeling good in your home city that you built with your bare hands. And all of a sudden, one day, you're walking down that street and you look into the little gutter, the sewer gutter, you know, you know, like the one that it is inside of Pennywise. He's inside of that one of those things. And you see a big rat, a big rat, like just a ginormous rat. And he says, come here. Hey, come here. You're like me. It's like, yeah, come here. I want to tell you something. You humor the rat. You don't want to touch it. It's gross. But you'll go and you'll talk to the rat. You squat down. You look at the rat and he tempts you with something. Whatever it is, whatever that thing is, he tempts you with something. Let's say it's $1,000. $1,000 he's willing to give you as long as you come and visit him every day. And so you take him up on that offer. Each day you get $1,000. Even though the city you built already generated so much money, even though you live a good life and you don't need that $1,000, you just want it. Might as well get it. Talking to the rat isn't that bad. He's kind of funny, a little annoying, but he's funny. And so you go up to him each day. And one day you notice that he's gone, that he's just gone. And you don't know what it is. You just figure that he's just gone, you know, or maybe it's just a day off for him. So you go, you, you go on to your little business area, your little CEO building with the, the giant picture of you on there. Cause you're a big businessman. You got your arms crossed here with a big grin and you go to enter and you open up your wallet to get your little key card to get into your office. And you notice all the thousands of dollars that you had are gone. They're just gone. And in fact, you haven't even opened it up to see that since when you first met the rat. And not only that, you're missing more money than when you first met the rat. And then you think about it. And you think how you notice something in your back pocket every time you were talking to that rat, that conniving rat. It turns out all he wanted was you to go over to him, talk to him, have your attention on him, put as much attention and effort as possible with the incentive of getting something only for his buddy rat to come up behind, pickpocket you, take the money from last time, but also take a hundred or so dollars each time from your personal money that you had. And so all that effort, all that kindness that you gave for an incentive of something pleasurable, you seem to have lost more than you've gained. In fact, you didn't get anything. You lost it all. The rat wins. And so you feel like you've been wronged. You feel like they fucked you over. And you're mad. You're mad about it. And in fact, your worst fears came true. I've put so much time into being nice and now it, it, I'm punished for it. The worst of the worst happened. I expected the best. I expected to be rewarded and I got my dignity taken away, my money taken away, and everything else that I cared about taken away. And it turns out they used that money to renovate my own city and kick me out of it. And now it's a rat infested Atlantis that I can't even get in anymore. They've been doing this for a while. They run this con every day. And I was just a part of it. Now that feeling, it's unrealistic because rats don't talk, but it's also funny because it's something we have felt in a real way. The feeling of putting so much in to try to be kind, whether it has an incentive or not, but specifically when it has some sort of emotional incentive or even financial, and we get fucked over because of it. And oftentimes, if that keeps happening to us in our lives, let's say we try to, you know, form a relationship with someone and we put so much almost cold, codependent effort into it and then we're just met with coldness or just not equal, equal gain for equal give, we're just met with the thing that makes it feel dissatisfying, we start to get frustrated and eventually we might start to grow some resentment, if not to the specific person, to the idea of giving to people. You know, being kind. Life becomes cold and unforgiving when the gifts we bestow upon those we love are not kind of given back to us, I guess, at least eventually. You know, we can try to give things to people and we could try to be virtuous and we don't really expect anything back. Now, maybe we don't expect that thousand dollars from the gross rat, but the gross rat, I hope, at least appreciates what I'm doing. Turns out that wasn't the case, though. And so I put so much time into pouring my heart out just for that heart to get stomped on. That builds up this sort of, I would say, 
preconceived notion about relationships or any sort of thing like that. This feeling that we're going to get messed up, fucked up, and fucked over every time we try to put our heart into something with another person. You know, as a guy, as a man, a big, smelly, gross, hairy man, uh, I actually don't have that much hair on my body, but regardless, it's kind of this sort of thing with, you know, finding a woman, with uh, finding a girl that I think a lot of guys go through. We have one or two or many instances in a relationship where we felt as if we weren't treated correctly and eventually we start to generalize and project that feeling onto all relationships we could ever have or even for girls out there who go through the same thing you know all guys are bad or all girls are bad or all relationships are going to end in disaster and that that causes us to catastrophize when we get into these situations and that's kind of the main discussion i'm going to have that sort of i don't know catastrophe based mindset of using my experience not to construct something positive, but unfortunately constructing something negative. A view that makes me think the world's gonna just keep fucking me over. I keep saying it because it feels like that. It feels like the world's gonna fuck me over each time that I attempt to make progress and grow and be kind to people. Now, I'm here to tell you that that's not true, but what do I know? What I'm actually here to talk about is what that feels like, the emotions that manifest. And the process we all go through, because I've been through it. I've been through that feeling where the world seems like it's, I don't know, going in your favor. And then all of a sudden, something crashes down. And that pain is, is seemingly insurmountable. And it, it constructs this narrative in our head that the good things lead to bad outcomes. And that's never something that can be good. It's never a good thing to have. It sucks. That shit sucks. It doesn't really do anything for us other than hold us back, yet we cling on to it because the pain was real. And it cut deep, like a Jason Voorhees machete to the dome, you know, right through the noggin. And that, that noggin was changed forever. We view it differently through our mind, and that trauma of the unconscious sort starts to manifest as something that projects. It generalizes, it globalizes. And we see all people, or at least all opportunities with people, in some way, as a potentially negative thing. We try to protect ourselves, and it's a scary dilemma because there is real risk. The scariest dilemmas are not the ones where it's some made-up, fabricated thing. The scariest dilemmas are the ones that are rooted in a true traumatic experience, you know? It's not like I stub my toe and all of a sudden I'm scared to walk. It's that my toe was smashed by something that constantly is around me, you know? A giant hammer that just falls out of nowhere, it seems, and maybe I can dictate wherever I am so that that hammer doesn't land on me. But if that hammer lands on me, that pain hurts. And so I'm be you best know I'm going to try to avoid that. I, I just don't want that sort of pain. And it sucks because these things are supposed to be fun. You know, when we go into friendships or relationships or, or hobbies or passions, we're supposed to have fun and enjoy it. It's supposed to be gratifying, but that fear that it might end in disaster, and not only that, it'll all be for nothing, it seems, that seems very defeating. It's like, why bother, right? Why bother go into this world if that world is so cruel where it will never reciprocate back what I give to it? That world fucking hates me. It really does. That's what it feels like. It feels almost like this isn't a game of life, but rather that life plays games with me. Like toying with me. Like if I do one thing, I'm met with the opposing force that will smash my efforts. And while the world I don't believe works like that necessarily, I, I do think that cause and effect can be a bitch sometimes, you know? Even if that cause seems almost opposite to the effect that comes with it. You, you try to work in your life towards something positive. You try to, you know, do something new and anxiety-inducing, and instead of being met with reward, you're met with punishment. That anxiety comes to fruition, and in fact, it's worse than it ever could have been in your head. For example, I, when, I first, when I got my first job, first and only real employed job, I've worked smaller things, but when I first went into a work environment, the fear was always, what's the job interview going to be like? Am I going to fail that? That's so scary to me and nerve wracking. I'm so afraid of that job interview, yet I have to do it because I want that job. I want an experience of working in a work environment. And I need money, obviously. And so I went and did that. I went and, you know, a bunch of Ativan in my system, of course, at the time, while I was abusing drugs. I went in and talked to the, the employer, and I basically sat there 
dumbfounded, awestruck at the anxiety and fear of the moment. She basically just talked the whole time. It was over. She told me that I would be a good fit for the job, and I felt ecstatic. I felt elated. I beat the fear, right? Wrong. Wrong. The fear was something I couldn't even imagine. It was what was actually inside of that work environment. It was things I still can't explain. A vibe, an aura, a, a presence of something that causes extreme fear and dysregulation. It fucking sucked, and I had to deal with that. Eventually getting a workplace injury because I didn't know what I was doing. I was too scared to be into it. I was dissociated the whole time, and I, I didn't know how to do my job. And then I walked out with trauma, still, to this day, terrified of putting myself back in that situation. That's a horrible feeling. All from the overcoming of fear, the triumph over the big scary monster. No, the big scary monster, I said it before, it often can be the destination we arrive at, whether it's driven by fear or not, you know? It's like the thing that we're in, that, that place that's supposed to be almost the reward. It's merely a destination that is a result of me being scared. And it's horrifying. And so, of course I catastrophize about work environments. Of course I see them more negatively. And of course I have an objective view. I respect that people go into them and they love working and they love getting that gratified feeling. It's just with me, my subjective view. It's driven by fear, and it's constructed and molded by it, and I, I really, it's hard for me to break out of that, and I know that you or anyone around you goes through the same thing with whatever they've been through, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a friendship, whether it's just something that you haven't been able to get back to, like a hobby, because that hobby eventually caused some sort of big feeling of inadequacy because it didn't work out or something. It's never easy, and all that pain... All that hardship, all that struggle, and all that trauma, it builds up, stacks up like fucking building blocks, like letter blocks that a child would play with to spell out the worst possible thing to say to yourself so that you don't do the thing you're afraid of. And that's all coming from a real place. Real emotions manifesting and in, in constructing a narrative that could happen, that truly could. This is not just anxiety. It's not just panic. This is something that actually feels real because it was real once and it could happen again. Now, do we stay sedentary because of that? No, but we have caution. We have caution and we have diligence with some actual ease and some understanding and some true, I guess, I don't know, not, not being carefree, actually truly giving a fuck enough to give us some time to figure this out. But never being complacent, never being stagnant, never being, never being sedentary, truly being proactive in a way that makes sense. And that's easier said than done. We don't go and grab the weed whacker and go and whack weeds with it until we've been taught how to actually do it because we might cut our fingers and head and legs and feet off or might cut someone else's head and legs and, and feet and arms off. We don't do that. What we do is try to find a way to learn how to use the weed whacker. Maybe we ask someone. Maybe they walk us through it. You know, so that the catastrophe doesn't unfold because it very well could if we're not prepared for it. However much time that takes, take it. Even if there's resistance, you know, as long as that resistance is not rage filled or resentment filled or fear filled, you know, if people around you are screaming at you, please, please, you know, you don't want that. But if people are kind of urging you to get on the path that they want you to, try to find within yourself the security or at least the questioning of whether or not that path is good for you. And if it is, stay secure with that. Stay truthful to it and make sure that you're never stagnant in it. Because there's a difference between following your heart for real and doing what you need to do and just saying that. And really just you're not doing it. You're just saying, give me time. And you're giving no evidence to the other party that you're actually going to do something with that time. And if you need their help, get it. Get their help. Ask for it. And if it's difficult, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out through ourselves and then we can get to a point where maybe something comes along or we'll go get it and we can get that help we need but the world's going to be a difficult place to be in if we don't start to see life as more than the catastrophes of the past the disaster that came from it and the trauma we still hold to this day and we know that truly we know that you and i know that we're told it all the time in a way you know oh stick it out it'll be okay just stay positive. You'll be fine. <laughs> we know. But we want to feel that. We truly do. And 
whatever we can do to make that happen, it could be internal, it could be external, but that fear that we feel about the world, it eventually builds up to the point where whatever that those building blocks spelled out, it manifests into a physical form in our real world life, the life that we live in the real world, and we have to face it head on. That sucks if we're not. So let's prepare for it. Let's put one foot in front of the other. I'm in the holiday spirit. I'm really excited. Christmas around the corner. Get your stockings and your cookies and milk and your bean dip. And let's go have a Merry Christmas. It's not even Thanksgiving yet, but I'm excited. It's close. Regardless. Regardless. <laughs> Sorry, I got sidetracked. It's very important to make sure that we give ourselves ease and time to prepare for these very difficult things we do. No matter what we're doing. No matter what. We do those things in a way that is prepared and focused and, and intuition driven. And uh, we follow our heart through that. But we don't do that without the actual preparation. And that takes some more meticulous, calculated efforts. So, one thing we can do is just try to work within the internal. And I think starting to build those blocks of our own accord and write whatever's on them and then spell out something positive with them, that's a much better path than just taking whatever's given to us and trying to make it work. We can't really do that. So for me, um, I've been trying to get to a point where I feel more secure with the scary parts of life. And I've actually done very well with that. Like I have kind of put myself in the mindset of pushing myself or I guess really just noting whatever fear arises and not using it as like a, Oh, I'm scared of it. Let's go do it. No, Using it as an indicator for reaction that I need to study, you know, look at what I'm actually feeling and use my intuition to make a decision of whether or not I want to face that fear, or maybe I can just hold back for now because maybe I don't need to face that fear currently. Maybe I can wait, you know, if I rushed into the dragon's lair without a sword to fight it with, that'd be stupid, right? Well, if I have the sword, the sword of a thousand trues, and I go and fight the dragon, maybe I can win. At least I have something at my side to help. Now, if I just go and listen to fear no matter what, I'll end up getting hurt. I will. So that's an important part. That's one thing. And I think constructing a sort of way to get to that point, it centers around trust. Trust in yourself. That the past does not dictate the future any more than the base traits of life itself. And if you can understand those base traits of life, more specifically, those traits of yourself, then those unpredictable things, you can maybe infer a little better. And once you infer, you find a path to kind of walk through those inferences. It's kind of hard to articulate it perfectly, but basically I'll say straight up, just start forming that relationship with yourself that can say, we're not going to falter so hard if we fail. That's kind of the big starting point. Believing that even when failure happens, even when the pain sets in deeper than ever, the ability to cope with it, we trust ourselves to do that. And we give ourselves grace to learn how to do that. And it's a cyclical process we have to keep doing. And eventually, you know, once you get the help you need from people, from whatever, from a therapist, from treatment, from whatever, medication, I don't know, from a sport, from a hobby, from a, a passion, from video games, from movies, from shows, from books, I don't know. Once you get that, then you can see that there's an external thing on the outside that can be taken and put into the inside. And that whatever lessons I learn or whatever support I get, it's all a part of me being okay with saying, shit, let's go do it. Let's go finally take this thing on. Because I have so many different things around me that feel so good to have that if I don't get the thing I want, I still have so much with me, including my own security. That spirit, you know, that Spartan general spirit that's tough to the, to the nails and goes in and does whatever he needs to. But he doesn't do it dumbly. Because he's been trained for years on years on years, no matter how brutal that training was. And we don't want to make it a huge, brutal thing for us, but it will be. You know, life. We've already had so much brutal training in our childhood, our teenage years, our adult years, whatever. So we're hardened in that way. And we just got to stay hopeful that those things that we went through meant something and that we can take away something from them so that we don't look to the past as a way to talk about trauma as much as we do a way to talk about what can be taken away and put into this life, the present. So we don't catastrophize. So we don't feel like the world's going to end in disaster so that we don't feel like the rats will kick us out of our own city and rule with an iron fist over those who we love. We need that. We need to feel okay. You know? 
first and foremost. I, I've said before, like, with a lot of issues we go through, we don't necessarily care as much about the reality as we do about not feeling the way we do about whatever reality is out there. We just don't want to feel so bad anymore. I don't care if there's this sort of disaster going outside. If I'm safe within it, and if I'm secure in it, you know, I want to be able to help, but at least I'm safe, and that's what really makes it so it doesn't hurt so bad. When the disaster sucks me into it, and I'm stirred up in the tornado of chaos, then I start to worry. Because myself, my, my personhood, it's being hurt. And we spend so long being sucked up in that tornado and seeing everyone we love outside of it, and we don't want them inside of it, but we just want to be with them on the outside. You know? And they can help us do that, right? We don't want to be caught in turmoil anymore. We want to be able to sit down and enjoy life and feel good about it and do something with it, you know? Actually work towards something fun and enjoyable. Not be so scared of the times where we attempt that. And if we can do that, if we can get to that point, then there's a lot of possibilities to be seen within our brain noodle, within that spaghetti, you know, to actually do something with that spaghetti and make some great pasta and meatball and have it taste oh so good that's tasty that's yumma it's honestly it's scrumptious and i think that once we can get that uh, things are going to seem a lot more flavorful in our lives the rose colored glasses can finally be put on but we can lift the the little uh lens and actually see the world for what it is and be okay with what we're looking at that's great i hope you get it I hope I get it. I, I'm getting it, I think. I've gotten it. Uh, but, you know, it's always something to be improved on. But I hope you get it if you don't have it and you hold it tight and you get that $1,000 for real this time. That's all for today. See ya!